What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Board Games. Are for everybody, where today we're going to be taking a look at Mountain Goats, a game by uh, Stefan Risthaus. Uh, I believe it might be self-published because I don't actually see a, a publisher on here, but uh, this is a, a tiny, tiny box. I mean, you've seen the boxes that we usually cover uh, on this screen, and compared to those, this, uh, this is quite the small box, quite the small box. So we're going to open this up, take a look. This is a really simple, uh, it's not really a, a card game. It's, it's more like a dice game, I suppose. Uh, a really simple dice game that utilizes a handful of cards and some uh, little goat tokens and a handful of dice here in order to play the entire game. Now, when we played it, we just had the two of us, but we're gonna show a four player game just for uh, the sake of showing a four player game, I suppose. So we've got just a bunch of different cards here, different mount card, mountain cards uh, from eight all the way down to five in different, in different uh, denominations. So we're going to start just want to make sure everything's still in frame here. Everything goes up quite far. So we got 10 here, which has two tiles. We have nine, which has two tiles as well. We have eight, which has three tiles. We have seven, which I believe also has three tiles. I'm going to have to push this down a bit because I am starting to run out of room. That is still in a frame. We might push it down just a little bit farther here. The joys of setting up games to talk about them. <laughs> this is where editing would probably be useful in, uh, in these videos, but well, we already know how that goes. <laughs> We've got four uh, tiles for six here, and then we also have four tiles for five as well. And this is going to create our mountain, which said goats are going to be mountaining on. So once we have our mountain set up, each player is going to take one of their goats If I can get this bag open. Apparently, bags being opened is the new hard part of setting up a board game. And we're going to place a goat at the bottom of each hill. And this is going to be where the first lie came into play for this video. I'm not going to be doing all four players. Maybe we'll do three players, though. We can explain everything with two, but... We, should, we have to get that visual flair into the videos, right? We got to make sure that our videos our videos stay visually appealing to everybody. I swear I have dropped something in every video so far. Where did that go? Grab that in a sec. Oh, it's behind me, that's why. There we go. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've dropped something in every video so far. And we got our red goats here. So we'll do three sets of goats here. Three player game. And the way that the way uh, the way that the game works is that you want to get your goats up to the top section of the mountain. But you don't want to just get to the top of the mountain because if another player's goat reaches the top of the mountain, they're going to knock you all the way back to the bottom of the mountain. So on your turn, let's say the white goat is starting first, you're going to take your dice and you're going to roll them. So in this case, we got three fives and a three. And what you're going to do is you're going to take all of these dice and you're going to make combinations of numbers and move your goats up the mountain in those uh, denominations. So I could say move one goat up three spaces on the five track, but then I would be left with a three dice that doesn't do anything. I could move up twice on the five track and one 
on the eight track by using my five and three, or I could use these two dice to move up once on the 10 track and then use these either as a five or an eight. So let's say that the, the white goat decides to go one onto the 10 and we decide to go one on the eight so that we're not wasting a die. That would be the goat's turn. So this basically continues until a player gets to the top of a mountain. I'm just gonna set these guys up on the side here. However, we're gonna leave all these guys kind of scattered just so we don't have to sort them all. So on the next player's turn, let's say yellow is the next player. They're gonna roll. We now have a two, a three, a five, and a six. So we could make a combination of three, two, and five to move up on the 10, and we could move up one on the six. We could use a combination of five and two to move up on the seven, and the three and six to move up on the nine. We could use any combination that we can think of to move up on spaces. So let's say that the yellow goat player wants to move up one on seven and one on nine. Uh, we're seven. And now we come to the red goat, and they've got two sixes and two twos. So let's say that they, if they use their sixes to go up, they're going to be left with these two twos that can't do anything. So let's say they just decide to go up twice on the eight track, putting them up here. So the way that the game works is that each round, you're going to be rolling your dice, you're going to be making combinations, trying to get to the top. So let's say on a turn, a player's goat does get to the top of the mountain. Once they get to the top of the mountain, they're going to acquire a point token for that specified mountain, and they're gonna keep it in their uh, pile of points. Now, once a player gains one point from every single mountain, oh, I took the wrong one. Once a player gains a point from every single mountain, they acquire, let's just get everything here, eight, seven, five, that's everything, uh, nine, seven, six, five. So once a player acquires one token from each of the uh, f five, six, each of the six uh, mountains, they're gonna gain whatever the highest bonus token is that is left on the bonus token track. There are four bonus tokens that you can acquire. Uh, you've got 15, 12, nine, and six. The way that the game works for scoring, or for the end of the game, I should say, is that if all of the bonus tokens run out, or if all of the point tokens run out before the... Uh, the bonus tokens are taken, then the game ends. So once you gain one of each of the tokens, you're gonna get a bonus token. And that's how scoring works, getting to the top of the mountain and claiming a token. Now, if you're already at the top of the mountain and you happen to roll on the dice, another number that can make a combination, instead of moving your goat higher up on the track, which you can't do, you would stay at the top of the track and you would just collect another token from that uh, from that point category. Now, let's say that as you're going along the game, you know, the other goats are starting to catch up to you here and you're worrying for your time at the top because once another player happens to roll a combination that allows them to move to the top of the mountain your goat gets kicked all the way to the bottom of the mountain and that player now scores a token for that top piece so that's pretty much how the game works you're going to do this until all of your bonus tokens are gone or until all of your point tokens are gone and then at the end of the game whichever player has the most uh points is deemed the winner and that's pretty much all there is to say about the game as far as mechanics and stuff go. It is a very, very simple game to learn. But regardless of the fact that it's, it's a fairly simple game where you're more or less just rolling dice and moving your goats up these uh, mountain tiles, it's actually surprisingly 
fun. I was I was surprised when we played it that uh, I enjoyed it as much as I did. There is some strategy to it. Uh, some strategy to it. Sorry. There is some strategy to it where you're trying to figure out when the best time to be at the top of each mountain is. Obviously, with your nines and tens, it's a lot harder to stay up at the top of the mountain uh, for a longer period of time because there's only two tiles. However, rolling combinations of nine and ten are a lot harder than, say, rolling combinations of seven or rolling combinations of five. So it makes sense that trying to be at the top of ten and nine early on could be advantageous. However, trying to be at the top of these lower numbers means that your opponents have to go a farther distance before being able to knock you down. So you really have to balance between uh, whether you want to just try and get to the top of a mountain and just keep scoring points on that mountain, or if you want to try and get to the top of every mountain to gain those bonus points and try and end the game faster if you have a lot of points, or if you're trying to catch up and get bigger um uh, point payouts from all your different tokens. And that is more or less Mountain Goats. This was definitely a much shorter video than usual, but uh, it's it's just, it's that simple. There's there's really not uh, much to it mechanic-wise, but it is it is surprisingly, um, surprisingly fun and surprisingly strategic. So if any of you guys have played Mountain Goats, let me know what you think of it down below. Did you enjoy it? Is it too simple for you? Is it just simple enough? Obviously, not everyone's going to be out there playing the the newest uh, the 40-hour game that you have to sit down and play and do multiple sessions of. Sometimes a nice, quick, small box game is is really what you need. If it's, if it's as a filler or you just have a short, quick time to play something, um, this, one's, this one's great for that. Uh, the only thing that you really have to watch out for is that it does it does take up a little bit of space it does take up a little bit of space as you can see here we pretty much have it spread out across the entire camera length here so if you're playing this as a travel game just you have to make sure you have a table you're not going to be playing this one in the car or anything like that but um yeah that's that's mountain goats if you guys have played it let me know what you think down below if seeing this has made you want to look into it let me know that down below as well it's always interesting to see what people are inspired to play games based on the stuff that I talk about. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys are on Instagram, check us out at the Board Games Are For Everybody Instagram page. Uh, we post photos of games that we're playing. We post photos of games that we're, uh, we pick up either from uh, thrift stores or uh, just regular stores, uh, stuff that we're kind of collecting and doing outside of the the regular monthly pickup videos you can catch all that stuff over on instagram so if you're on there check us out board games are for everybody simple to to look it up and find it's the exact same as the youtube channel but yeah that was mountain goats guys thank you very much for stopping by hopefully you enjoyed the video hopefully i will see you next time but until then just remember board games are for everybody and until then peace